And with the time coming up to nine o'clock, it's time for VT Talk. And indeed, it's Wednesday night. Chat or no chat, with notwithstanding all of that kind of stuff, it's here, there, and everywhere. It's all over the place tonight. It's all good fun. We're blaming the water this time. We think it's probably the water that's causing it all. But welcome to the New Look VT Talk, where you will see, on my right-hand side, we have Matt Gluggles coming up all the way from York. And over here, on my left-hand side, over there, it's the effervescent loveliness that is... Ginger number two, <laughs> it's Daz, Darren Johnson, who's joining us tonight, uh, learning the ropes from Sav. Sav is in the background, pulling all the little ropes and making sure he's, because he's, you know, he's going to be coming and joining us in the studio as well as, as various other things. You'll be seeing his face popping up here, there and everywhere. Um, this is VT Talk, and tonight we are going to be talking about all manner of things, um, prior to which, I suppose... I need to play the titles. And here they come. So yes, here we are um, in the slightly new look uh, well, I don't know what you would call it, studio, uh, breakfast room, back end, garage, whatever it is. Uh, this is where we are, and this is, this is the set as it stands at the minute. And uh, hopefully it makes life a little bit simpler for people to see what's going on, and hopefully it'll be a little bit better quality. Um, and it's, it's lovely to welcome Matt back. Matt, it's nice to see you. Uh, how have you been doing since last we spoke? I've uh, been very busy. Um, yeah, just keeping up with demand, obviously the Christmas period and so on, so we had a bit of a rest when things uh, quietened down in January in terms of the shop, but things have not quietened down in terms of uh, the e-cigs and the e-liquids, that's booming at the moment. What's the... Uh, uh, yeah, no, doing very, I'm doing very well. What's the, what's, the, what's the biggest selling e-liquid at the minute then? Um, it's always, for me, it's always just been a plain tobacco flavour, it's always been my biggest seller. Um, second, very closely by strawberry. That's what they're going for. Yeah, right. So, so, so a tobacco and then strawberry. Yep, it's one of those two. Right. A lot of people, a lot of people just buy a tobacco flavour with the first starter kit and just stick with it, you know, and just don't ever change. It. And if that's what they're happy with, I mean, great. I mean, to be honest, I smoke, I vape, pr pretty much um, seventy-five percent uh, tobacco flavour. So. Uh, I've got nothing wrong with, uh, I've got nothing against people that uh, don't really want to swap around. But no, strawberry is uh, very popular. Cherry menthol, that's uh, a new one uh, that's um, quite popular at the moment. Um, and also because we've just started with the Vermilion River as well and their tobacco flavours um, uh, quite slightly sweeter and uh, uh, they seem to be picking up as well quite nicely. Yes, I was just just looking at, at, at all of those bottles arrayed behind you there. It's just it's you There's do, a few. You, you it's do, one or two. You do realise that uh, Daz currently, because he's off screen, I've got him off screen for a reason. That's because he's on the phone hiring a van. We're coming <laughs> down to your place tomorrow night. That that yeah, looks well, that's ridiculous. I'd like to th you know, I'd like to think in, in five years' time this would be a typical off license uh, display, you know. It would it would be lovely to think that, wouldn't it? It'd be absolutely marvellous to uh, to see that in every off license that you go into. It would be because Gluggles, I, I take it, was an off license to start with. Yeah, it still is. And it's, it still it's is. that's kind of uh, that was where the business was, but it's branched into e -seeks. And before we came on air, you were telling me that uh, January the first has seen massive influxes of new people. Yeah, New Year's Eve, in fact, um, December the 31st, New Year's Eve, that was all we were selling was starter kits all day long. You know, so everyone, you know, this New Year's resolution type scenario and uh, people had obviously been thinking about it throughout the month. New Year's Eve, they thought, right, we'll start the new year with, with a kit and uh, it was really, really busy. 
uh, but it was when when we opened up after we were closed New Year's Day, we opened up on January the second. I had no kits, nothing. I was frantically ordering new stuff. So. All oh, right. Are you are you getting much repeat business out of the people that came in and bought on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and what have you? Oh yeah. Um, one of the things is that people like to buy in a shop for because they can come back and ask you questions and you know ask how this works and that works and your advice on different fluids and stuff like that. And um, so, I mean, it is, that's the main thing that uh, we get from it is the, the repeat business that comes back. People, you know, take my recommendation. They can ask me, um, you know, what would be the next, they ask if we've got any new liquids in all the time and which we have. And, uh, you know, they ask about different atomizers and so on. Um, the biggest selling thing, I mean, the easiest thing that that makes it um, e-cig, so I think is the Vision. The Vision Atomizer, the Vision Clearomizer is just fantastic because it's so easy to use. It's so obvious to explain to people. You pour the liquid in, you screw it on your battery and off you go. And, uh, you, you know, you check every, whenever it wears, um, dead simple. So uh, the, the, the main thing that we sell at the moment is like a, an ego and a vision clearomizer type starter kit with a bottle of liquid um and we're getting we've got other atomizers like the biancy i missed and uh, a few of the other ones i'm looking at some new stuff at the moment that uh, there's the kanka clearomizers we're going to be getting in mm. um just to give everyone you know a little bit of choice but start out and you can't really go wrong with that it's uh, gets you on the road to vaping and and, uh, and then different people take it from there. Some just stick with it. Other people want to experiment and try new gear. And it's a case of just uh, having something for everyone, I think. Yes. I mean, I've got to say, I'm... I'm Certainly, I... it's, it's a hell of... It's, it's, it's a lot more fun than selling cigarettes. I'll tell you that for nothing. Well, I'm sure it must be. <laughs> and, and the thing about it is, I mean, you've mentioned the, uh, the Vision Ego and uh, that piece of video that I did a few weeks ago um, that's, that's been up on, on YouTube for a while. I would think that... that to me, at any rate, that makes uh, a cracking piece of starter kit. Um, it works exceptionally well. Very easy to fill, very easy to use. I'm not surprised they're moving in, uh, in good numbers. Quick question for you, because it's it's germane to what we're going to be talking about tonight. Do you, I mean, firstly, do you sell any Lucky Lakeys? Uh, we do. We sell the, um, we sell a brand, a Jack Vapor brand, it's called, and uh, we don't sell as much as we used to. When I, when I started on e-cigs, that was my main e-cig that I was selling. Uh, now it's all, uh, it seems to be a lot more ego-based, but um, that's the brand I think is the best. Um, I'm not saying it is the best, I'm just saying it's the one that I've, I, I seem to get on with very well. And uh, it, uh, yeah, we sell them, but uh, not nowhere near as much as we used to. People ask what my advice is, and I tend to, suggest uh, a 900 milliamp hour battery to start off with mm. we don't even have 650 so the, the lowest ego we've got is 900 nice. um, you know they're small enough and easy enough to hold um, you've got everything that you need but there are, there are a lot of people there that just want the form factor of a, of a cigarette key and, um, and so you know we've got something for them as well well, that... you know, the battery, the only thing, what I always recommend if people are going to buy that is get a kit with a PCC, portable charging case, because mm. uh, you're going to need basically. Um, and once they're up and running with a PCC, some people are quite happy just buying a new battery every few weeks when it wears out. And if that's what they're happy with, you know, good on them. They're, you know, they've found something they like. Um, other people then start off with, the, you know, because they see me puffing away on, on my gear um, and they'll start off on a Sigalike four or five weeks later they'll come back and buy a bigger battery and then they've got a bit of both really um and, and so that you know that's how it works indeed and i mean it's got to make a lot of difference as well I, what, roughly um in in terms of proportions um what proportion of of lucky ladies do you sell uh versus the uh, the vision ego with the uh, the ego battery on there i mean is the is the ego a bigger seller than the lucky ladies uh, for me, no, it's about 90% ego, 90% ego at the moment. That's... And when, when I started, it was, it was the other way around. Um, but now I'm, I'm a bit more confident. I'm a bit more assertive in the advice that I give to people. 
um, and the people take my advice, they seem to take my advice a lot more than they used to do. When I, if you turn back the clock six months, people would come in and say, I want one of those, pointing at a Siggy Likey. And I would say, have you seen these other ones? And they would say, don't care, I want one of those. Whereas nowadays, I think a lot of it is to do with um, they've got a mate who's got one. And, mm. and their mate has got an ego and so they come in and now they're wanting an ego because that's the one they've seen in the pub or at work or uh, wherever it is so the ego is becoming much more uh, much more popular I mean it's not uncommon now walking around York there's a there's another e-cig shop uh, not far from here and uh, so it's quite common for uh, to actually see people walking up the road puffing away on uh, on an ego um, Six months ago, it was very rare. Now, it's quite an ordinary thing to see walking up and down the street. So, York's become the, the epicentre of, uh, of vaping, then. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it kind of all comes back to what uh, Carl Phillips was saying about this tipping point, and, and the more people see them, the more likely they are to, to, to be able to use them and to want to use them and to, to become interested and, and uh, what's the word, curious about what they are. Um, and it's, it's nice to hear that you know, you're doing 90% of the Vision Ego versus 10% of the uh, the Lucky Lighties. That's that's brilliant use as far as I'm concerned. Daz, is, uh, have, have we comments in chat about any of this at this point? Yeah, I've just picked up on a comment. Um, chat's just uh, in the middle of getting settled at the moment. So, uh, But we've got a comment coming from MJ Jones. And he said, I know some people prefer the form factor of Lucky Lighties, but why do they have to be sig coloured? Well, that's that's a question that's it's bugged me for donkey's ages. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I mean, when you look at it, it's something like uh, what? A, let's have a quick delve into the draw just to prove it works, as you do. Um, something like the Richie Impulse, which is black. And I mean, all right, if you if you're an old fart like me, you probably remember the days of the Sobrani. Um But the Impulse being black might ape that but it doesn't have the gold filter and it's got a white end it, it, it's fairly obvious that it's not actually being used in any way shape or form as a cigarette per se it's not lit it's not burning there's no red it's it's obvious um and yeah it does kind of bug me that you see so many of these various different firms that are flogging the form factor but in siggy colors it, it's it's one of those things and it i think as well it plays into the hands of people like that terrible reporter on the Daily Mail. And I think we probably need to cover that fairly quickly, um, just to let the blood boil a little bit and uh, and what have you. So I'll, I'll stick the headline up on screen, and then I think what I might do is just, well, I'm going to light the blue touch paper and retire, because I know you feel very, very strongly about this, Matt. So here, right. here it goes. Here's the piece, and it's there for people to see. E-cigarettes can cause more harm than smoking, experts say. Propylene glycol in e-cigarettes can be harmful. Chemical can cause acute respiratory system irritation. They are billed as a healthier alternative to smoking, yet experts now warn that electronic cigarettes may be more damaging than the habit they replace. Matt, I'm just going to let you riff on that one because I know you want to. Well, the journalist can sue me if she likes, but I think that that piece must, can only have been written by a complete moron, you know. And it, when you look at it, where's the research in that story? It's not there. You've got to be utterly stupid to actually believe any of that. Um, it's absolutely infuriating because people will Google electronic cigarettes and a lot of them will come up with that ridiculously idiotic article it was it when i saw that it made me absolutely mad um how can someone sit down at a computer and write such utter utter rubbish you know cigarettes more harmful than e-cigs experts say well when you read the article um there aren't any experts saying that at all um no she said experts plural that well, the, there was the, the, one there's not even one, one doctor. Yeah, there's one doctor who said it gives you a sore throat. You know. Well, I mean, if if you count, if you only if you count Stanton glance, Stan glance, only if you count Stan glance, would it be experts? 
Only then. Right. Um, but seriously, I mean, <laughs> if, it's, it's just, it's, it's off the wall. But hasn't Clive Bates already made a complaint to the Press Complaints Commission? He has, and that's got to be followed up. I've made a complaint as well, and I, I'm encouraging all my friends to put in a complaint. Anyone can make a complaint. Um, if you think the article is inaccurate or misleading, it goes against the PCC guidelines, and that article is quite blatantly inaccurate. You know, I'd like to think that it's um, stupidity, because the other option is that it's malicious. Um, so let's go with stupidity for now. And that article is highly, highly, it's irresponsible, it's highly dangerous. Um, if you Google the headline, it's actually been picked up by a number of different websites around the world. You know, I saw like the Hindu Stand Times have uh, copied it word for word in India. Um, there are other, other websites around the world have, have copied that story. But let's just stick to the UK and, and uh, uh, the, re the newspaper readership that will have picked up on that article. You've got to ask yourself, how many thousand smokers, especially in January with the New Year's resolutions, how many thousand smokers would have been thinking about e-cigs and then read that story and carried on smoking? Uh, there's got to be quite a few people that fall into that category. Um, I'm no... I'm, I'm no uh, statistician, but I'd, uh, it's got to be in at least four figures, if not five or six figures. And so they're going to be smoking today as a direct result of that story. Uh, irresponsible. Yeah, yeah. Irresponsible and stupid. You're, you're absolutely right. And uh, Clive was making the point that the headline is not just inaccurate, it's an outright lie and is in actual fact yeah. the exact opposite of what is the case. And yep. there are many, many other inaccuracies in there. I mean, I, I see that the um, the FDA study was dragged up yet again. Um, I had thought that one had been buried long enough since, but apparently that's not the case. Um, and yes, you're right in what you say. If, if people were, were looking to get involved, if you like, and decided that it might be a good idea to do a little bit of research first, then yes, they'll have... They'll have looked at the paper, they might have picked up the Daily Mail and go, oh, no, 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 we can't be having that. If, uh, if these things are more dangerous than fags, well, what the hell's the point in changing, you know? Why, why should I even consider uh, moving away from something I know to something that all the experts say, according to the Mail, is worse for you than cigarettes? It just doesn't make any sense in any way, shape or form. So you're advising people to uh, to contact the Press Complaints Commission and, and uh, make their feelings known, yes? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I've done it. it was, I'm following from Clive Bates's lead because I read his blog and I saw that he had uh, put in a complaint and I thought, well, you know, why can't anyone put in a complaint? I'm going to put in a complaint as well. Um, and so I'm, I'm suggesting to all my friends that they do it. It has to be nipped in the bud, and, and uh, I'm so pleased Clive Bates took the lead on this. So quick, immediately, I reckon. I think as soon as he saw the article, his uh, email to the PCC had been uh, sent off because his blog post went up within hours um, on Sunday morning. And uh, well, you mentioned the FDA article, and that's uh, the FDA report. That's very important. People are still quoting it now, four years later. So when you look at a, a totally inaccurate story like this in the mail, if it's not nipped in the bud, then it will still be quoted. Three or four years later, people will still be saying, oh, but going on to Google, look, there's an article here that says e-cigs are worth, worse than cigarettes. And that's why it's so important that the PCC take action and say, well, you know, they've got to, they've got to make a ruling and say that this is totally inaccurate. I think only an utter idiot would think that there was an ounce, a speck of truth in that. You know, they're saying things like, um, one of the reasons, one of the reasons, according to that article, that uh, e-cigs are dangerous is that they contain propylene glycol. Um, and, and she goes on, on about this as if there's something wrong in that. And someone, point, someone pointed out, um, <laughs> I, I read it on the internet, um, and it's a very good point. It's, it's the, one of the main uh, ingredients of this um, quick mist. You know, one of these therapy um, approved NRT therapies has, uh, based around propylene glycol and uh, nicotine and mint and hydrochloric acid and a few other bits and pieces they put in your mouth spray. And uh, so according to that logic, then that is more dangerous than smoking. 
So well, yes, absolutely. I mean, this was one of the things that I, uh, I'd been looking to, to kind of bring up and, and something I'm going to do a little bit of a video about, I think. But yes, um, this is a, a Nicotin um, oral spray. It's either Nicotin or Nicorette. It's one of the two, either way. I yeah. don't care if I'm bad mouthing the wrong ones because they're as bad as each other. Um, and yes, the whole, the whole notion of it is that this stuff is, uh, is meant to be used as nicotine replacement therapy, NRT. Um, and the whole idea behind it is that, that you get it and you squirt it in your mouth much as you would um, an asthma spray to give you a, a nicotine hit. And it's a buckle hit, what they call buckle, B-U-C-C-H-A-L. So it's absorbed in the mouth. But you can, should you so desire, you can inhale it too, and you go, as you would an asthma spray. And of course, this has got hydrochloric acid in it. And as far as I'm aware, I've yet to come across an e-cig that's got any hydrochloric acid in it. Um, and hydrochloric acid is highly corrosive. I mean, it gets used to take in rust off uh, all sorts of things when cars go in. Things get an acid bath before they plate it. I mean, it's highly corrosive stuff, is this? And yet, that can be sold, but apparently e-juice, when it's vaporised, is bad for you. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? I, I, my personal feeling is that this woman hasn't got the first clue what she's talking about and uh, she really ought to be taken to task over this. So I'll, I'll join Matt um, and say yes, right to the Press Complaints Commission. It was published on in Times Business on Saturday, I think it was, wasn't it? Was it Saturday or Sunday? Uh, mail on, no, Mail on Sunday. Mail on Sunday, that's right. It was Mail on yeah. Sunday it came out. Um, so the time is ripe. Um, if you if you feel that you want to have your say about this and get it retracted, because they will have to do the story correctly. They'll have to put a senior journalist in place to fully research it. And all of the right people will have to be contacted and interviewed. They'll have to get all of their facts straight, get all of their ducks in a row, and then they've got to print a properly put together retraction. And my suspicion is that if Clive Bates is kind of spearheading this, the retraction will be very, very well written. So I'll join Matt in saying, get onto them, get them told, because I will be as well. And that's probably a very good point to take the, uh, the first set of adverts. So we'll be back after two minutes when we're going to talk about a newspaper that's doing a rather better job of reporting the news on, on e-cigs. And we'll also be taking your comments in chat from the effervescent loveliness that is Daz. You all right there, Daz? Yes, I'm not too bad, thank you very much. Have you got much stuff coming through? Yeah, I've got quite a bit coming through. Excellent, yeah, right. Well, we'll go and take the first bunch of ads, and when we come back, we'll take your comments. Back in two minutes.
And we're back. It's Wednesday night. It's VT Talk with me, David Dawn. We've got Matt Gluggles here. And over there, we've got Darren Johnson, Vaping Daz, as he's known to very many people. Well, three at least. Something along those lines. <laughs> Possibly. And, and you've, Maybe four. <laughs> you've, got a whole, you've got a whole load of comments for us from chat, I believe, Daz. <clears throat> yes, I do. Um, the, we've got a comment from MG, MG Jones. And he says, I can't believe butter. Very boring, says, boo, get the reporter. Jeff has 12 says, why have I got a mental image of a room full of monkeys typing on keyboards attempting to get random sentences out? Lazy Vapor, very idle journalism with no research. Phil Emerson says, what's needed to turn the tide of the press against the six is the people like Carl Phillips. I think his name is to release to the press the papers and studies he has done at the E6. And we've got a final one from Margo, which says, I wonder if the Freedom of Information Act request will show if the journalist has big pharma or big tobacco shares. It's, uh, it's an interesting thought, is it not? A very interesting thought indeed. And uh, I would be interested to know that myself. I've got to say, the timing does seem a little bit suspect, given that the EU will be discussing the, the first session of, of the nonsense that's going on there on the 25th of February, which is four weeks today. No, four weeks, Monday gone. Um, 25th of February will be starting that. And it just seems strangely timed. I have to wonder where the press release came from for them to do that. Uh, but I'd, we're probably better not speculating on that at this point in time. Um, instead, let's go to a rather better written article. Um, this has come up in the Times, and this was, I think, on Saturday, although, Matt, you've got it there, I think, so you'll be able to read the date and tell me if I'm right. Um, but it's kind of a two-parter, is this one. And uh, the red arrow is mine, but it's entitled, It's Just a Drag. Licensing delays leave e-cigarette manufacturers in limbo. Um, and it says, A government plan to license all nicotine-containing electronic cigarettes has been delayed amid fears that up to 100 British businesses could be wiped out by the measure. The Medicines and Healthcare Regu uh, Products Regulatory Agency, part of the Department of Health, started a consultation on licensing almost three years ago, but has yet to make a decision. Um, since then, thousands more people have taken up the devices as an alternative to smoking tobacco. However, e-cigarette companies are not legally required to have a license unless they want to market the product as a smoking cessation device, a medicinal product. Now, I know, uh, I know you've seen this, Matt. Um, what yeah. do you make of, of the rest of that article? And we'll cover what Robert West said in, in, a, in a little while. Um, but what do, you, what do you make of all of that? Um, overall, it's a, you know it's a pretty well written article, um, a complete uh, um, breath of fresh air compared to some of the other uh, articles, obviously. But the uh, uh, there's a few points uh, that sprung to mind. So if we we'll come back to Robert West later, but they're saying there's one point where they say uh, they mention obviously BAT buy out of CN Creative, and they say that there's actually two products seeking an MA, and I was only aware of uh, they say two e-cigs seeking an MA. So I was only aware of the Nicodex unless they're getting confused with the Nicker Ventures, which I don't think is an e-cig, is it? I think it's an inhalator. Well, um, either way, they've, but, they've kind of... Um, Bat has bought out CN Creative and has come up with Nicker Ventures. And yeah. my understanding, although I cannot get confirmation from anyone, is that the device that... Um, uh, Nico Ventures is coming up with is the nicotine pyruvate thing that Murray Laugerson was part of, which, as you say, is not an electronic cigarette per se, but serves a similar sort of purpose. And if my reading of the patent application is correct, it produces a visible aerosol, a visible mist. But how right. dense that okay. would be, I don't know. Basically, it's it's kind of an e-cig looky-likey, <laughs> if you like. Right. It's an e-cig looky-likey, um, and that, that's, that's pretty much what they're coming up with. But I, I can see where the times would go with, you know, there are two of these products that are being brought about by BAT. But carry on, please. Yeah, so that's interesting. And obviously then the article goes on to uh, cover, um, mentions uh, Isita, um, and uh, some quotes, some, some good quotes, reassuring quotes from uh, Catherine De Devlin. Um, uh, they're coming out with uh, as an estimated 650,000 
Um, they say smokers using e-cigarettes. Um, okay, so 650,000. I think that's out of date now because um, they were saying 650,000 last summer. And I know from my own experience that that is, it could have doubled by now. Well, I was going to say, uh, if, if your experience over the, uh, the new year period is anything to go by, we're probably yeah. looking at 1.3 million. I mean, I wouldn't be I saying... Reckon. Wouldn't be so gauche as to suggest that it's 1.3 million, but I think we're probably closer to 800, 850,000 by now. Yeah, if you include the dual users, it's definitely over a million. Um, but I'd, yeah, they were saying 650,000 last summer, and so that figure's definitely uh, an underestimate, put it that way. Mm. Uh, I'd say it's uh, probably double that, that figure. Um, and uh, then she, um, see to go on, obviously they're talking about. Uh, um, the, the story that we've heard before that if the MHRA uh, plan to if the MHRA attempt to introduce regulations they're going to take the MHRA to court and as Cita was saying there have been four previous court cases under the same EU law and so they're pretty confident they're going to win um, so they're gearing up for a bit of a fight and then when you come back when you read a bit further on you get the quote from the MHRA which I thought was uh, quite interesting because I don't know what you think, but I think the MHRA have um, put a subtle shift of position in there. I would agree. Um, yeah, um, because all along they've been saying that they, they uh, are looking at this light touch regulation um, or this, uh, they've been talked about two tier regulations, I've heard of that before, one, one uh, for the market authorised product and uh, another re light touch regulation for all the other e-cigs. And mm -hmm. the MHRA have been pretty sort of stuck in their ways that this is what's going to happen in... Um, in spring, uh, now all of a sudden they're saying um, that they can uh, introduce regulation if the government decides to regulate e-cigs. So they're saying they're not saying they're going to do it at all. It's not definite anymore. They're saying if the government, um, it, what's the exact quote? We will be it, in a position to announce further details. Um, it, should the government should the government make the decision to regulate e-cigs as medicinal products? So they're and pretty it's, much it's, saying yes, and it says this is expected in spring let's of wait this year. To see if we're told. Yeah, I so, wonder. I just wonder whether that's tied in uh, to the EU process, and whether they're but, they're going to wait and see what Europe comes up with before government makes its own decision. It'd be interesting to see, and it might be useful to get hold of uh, an MHRA spokesman and see if I can get any further information. Now, as luck would have it, um, I'm actually down um, in London on the 25th of February, uh, speaking at a, a harm reduction conference down there, uh, alongside Jerry Stimson and one or two other people that people might have heard of. And um, it will be interesting to get hold of some of the MHRA, MHRA people that are there and put the hard questions to them and find out what exactly is going on and whether or not um, what they are thinking about introducing is going to be governed by what the EU decides. Because if that's the case, then we've got a bit of a stay of execution, I think. Um, and we've also got a situation where we've got, even, even now, we've got time for there to be a hell of a size uptake in people using e-cigs based on um, Carl Phillips's tipping theory, which I think is absolutely bang on. Um, the more people see e-cigs being used, the more likely they are to become curious and therefore try them. And we're not talking about evangelism here. Um, I mean, there's no need to be evangelistic about it at all, is there, uh, Matt? Uh, you, can, you just go out and use them and people will come and ask you, yeah? Yeah, exactly. You don't need to. People are curious. Um, I mean, I'd say that the majority of the e-cigs I sell at the moment are to people that have uh, come in because they've seen their mate with one. Um, so they, they've they coming in to buy it. You don't need to sell it to them. Um, and uh, six months ago, it was the other way around. People would ask it, but you'd have to explain it to them and they'd think about it. And there's none of that anymore. They walk in the shop and say, I want an e-cig. What, what, what are these... 
Um, and you know, in certain there are there are big parts of the country, or there are parts of the country now, and I think York's one of them, where the tipping point is very very close, if if it's not even uh, passed at the moment. And right. if it is, if there is a delay because of this Euro process, if they delay it by a year, uh, um, the uptake is just going to be absolutely phenomenal, and then we could get to the point where it's too late uh, for them to to clamp down too much on it. I mean, on the other hand, if the MHRA bring in some light touch regulation, we might get out of the EU um, proposal because the government might turn around and say this proposal doesn't apply to us uh, because we've already got our own regulations in place. So it could go either way. But personally, if I was going to place a bet, I'd say that my gut feel is that the MHRA uh, in spring are going to announce that they're going to wait and see. Um, they're going to announce that they, um, the government hasn't decided to regulate them just yet and they're going to wait and see. And so I think we're going to have an, probably another two years. Do you know, I really, or, uh, really do hope you're right. I really hope you're uh, right. And I'm, I'm sure that there'll have been loads and loads of comments in chat uh, on all of that. Daz, what can you tell us? Yep, chat's been listening with great intent and we've got a couple of comments that have just come in. The first one from Fuzzy, it would be good to have a panorama programme on this issue. The second one from Blackwater Vapor, I knew two vapors in July but now knows 20 locally. Uh, Jimbo1977 has said, my mum taught me Lewis's sidekick, that's the programme I take it, had a cigar like in Lewis the other day. Indeed. Now, funnily enough, my wife is a big, big fan of Lewis. I have no idea why. Probably because she was a big fan of Morse. And again, I have no idea why. But she was telling I mean, I it just bores the pants off me. But she was telling me that apparently the storyline goes something along the lines of his normal tall, blonde, lanky sidekick that used to be a priest was away on holiday. Now, this is a lad that's constantly sparking up. He's always got a fag in his mouth. And he's got a new, shorter, darker head, apparently, sidekick, while this other lad's away on holiday. And this new lad's been walking about and using an e-cig. It was a lucky lady, unfortunately. It's such a shame, Matt, that you hadn't been down on the set and got them an ego vision on top of an ego. But anyway, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> the, guy, the guy's been... Sorry, Dave, can I just tell you, there's a comment just come in as well from Jeffers, uh-huh. who said, I spotted an ego driving a disability scooter going round Aldi. Okay. <laughs> well, why not? Why not? But the thing about it is, though, <laughs> cut and cut and a very long story short, because it seems to me that most of Lewis's stories are very, very long stories that really could be done in 20 minutes and not the three and a half hours it seems to take. But apparently at the end of the show, the usual sidekick comes back and Lewis says, have you heard about e And he goes, aye. He says, well, you want to get yourself one of them. Now, that, I would suggest is the kind of television that we really do need to see. I think that's a good one. Uh, Matt, have you uh, you any thoughts on that one? Yeah, I mean, it is good. To, it's, it's, they're going mainstream now um, by coming up in shows like that. I mean, like I say, I agree with you about the, the, the Sigalite thing. Um, but I guess, you know, that's, that's what they're going to go for, aren't they? They probably just went to the nearest petrol station and bought a a disposable to use for the film. I mean, I'm guessing, I don't know that's what's happened, but um, it's still good that, I think it's brilliant that it's going into mainstream TV and also obviously with the TV ads as well that are, are coming out as well, that's making e cigs mainstream. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's all part of this tipping point and uh, we, if we're not there yet, we're very, very close to it. Yes, well, we'll look at the adverts um, in part three the third half, yeah. if you like. In fact, what we'll probably... It's, we, we need to look at what uh, Robert West said, though, um, as, as the, the, uh, the second part of this three-part article that The Times has done, um, just before we go into the adverts. And the first paragraph, I've got to say, um, on this uh, particular piece, he said, scrabbling with buttons, the first paragraph is, is brilliant. It says, If the world's one billion cigarette smokers were to switch to electronic cigarettes, the death toll would be reduced from more than 5 million each year to perhaps tens of thousands. E-cigarettes are designed to deliver nicotine to the user without the toxic gases 
and particles contained in cigarette smoke. Smokers and e-cigarette users can expect to get up to 20 milligrams of nicotine per day. Ha! Beginners. Um, at that dose, nicotine appears to have minimal effects on physical health for the large majority of people. And you sit there and you're thinking, I like this bloke. This is great. It's brilliant. And then you get, however, I can see why using e-cigarettes in indoor public areas could cause concern. It might undermine compliance with the smoke-free legislation. It could also lead to more smokers. No, it could also lead more smokers to carry on smoking cigarettes because they can substitute e-cigarettes when they need to smoke indoors. And it has been such a battle to make our indoor areas free of fumes. It seems like a backward step to allow them back, however small the direct health effects might be. Robert West is Cancer Research UK Director of Tobacco Research at University <coughs> College London. And what it doesn't say on that piece is they are funded by Big Pharma. So he's had to get his two paragraphs in, otherwise his funding's going to get cut off. What did you make of it, uh, Matt? Well, it um, doesn't stand up to logic, really, does it? Um, he's obviously just put that in because he has to say that. I mean, that was uh, pretty much bang on. Um, the idea that... Uh, smokers are going to carry on smoking because they can use an e-cig indoors. Uh, no, that, that, just, that whole idea just doesn't hold water. They'll carry on smoking if they want to carry on smoking. It's got People are quite used to getting up and standing outside and having a fag and coming back in. Um, it's got nothing to do with that. And I notice uh, Ash's new, Ash doesn't agree with him, Action on Smoking and Health, on their policy document. They clearly say, in black and white, there is no need for the indoor smoking plan to be applied to electronic cigarettes. So I'd go with that. <laughs> as, as would I, so, as would yeah. I. Um, yeah. And I, I really am hoping that we're going to be able to get uh, an Ash representative on the show at some point to discuss where they're, where they're sitting now and where they're going to go. And again, come the 25th of February, I should hopefully have a chance to get in touch with some of these people and be able to inveigle a few of them onto the show. But... Time is, is pressing on and it's against us. We, uh, we need to take the second set of ads. And when we come back, we're going to look at more ads. There are three, three that have been on telly. And we'll have a look at them and discuss them. And when we, But first, when we get back, we will take your comments from chat. But uh, we'll not be very long. Don't go anywhere. Safer6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Out Tonight being Wednesday night, it's time for the one and only chat show program called VT Talk. This is the Here's Out again. Again, Keith was just saying if it wasn't for the titles, he wouldn't come and do the show. He loves it so much better. Bye. I Weber and I Weber Elixir, best in Yorkshire for your AC games. That's I Weber.co.uk and I Weber-Elixir.co.uk. Sponsors of the Haze Hour. 
and we are back in the room. Daz, it's over to you. Yeah, we've got a couple of comments come in just during the ads. Um, Jeff has said, I had fun once. Blackbird <laughs> of Eva has said, Puritans. Yes. And John Bon One has put, I'd never complain about press TV coverage on E6, but make it the same level as Big Pharma. Yes. Yes, I quite, I quite get all of that. And, and the Puritans, see, I had fun once. It was awful. Honestly, I didn't enjoy myself at all while I was having fun. It was shocking. But adverts, if you've, if you've been watching um, various of the, uh, the, the non-terrestrial channels, I think is probably the best way to put it, you will have seen in various different places on different channels, three, count them, eins, zwei, drei, one, two, three, different adverts. I'm just going to play them in back to back. Um, and, and, and then let's see what we make of them because I don't quite know what to make of all of them. And there's a fourth one that I'm going to play in as well. But if, you've, if you're having your tea or if you haven't had your tea, I'll give you fair warning so you can go out because I'll need a sick bucket as well. But here's the first one. Spot the easy guard. Five colours. What's your flavour? It's time to come in from the cold. Five colours. Life is not about tomorrow, nor is it about yesterday. Life is about the moment, the now. Whoever you are, whatever you do, life only asks you one question. There you go. Oops. Mainstream, mainstream television advertising for e cigs, apparently. But that five colours one. Ah, <laughs> uh, what was that about? I mean, I'm, I'm going to go to Daz because I, I, for some reason, knowing Daz the way I do, I, I think Daz is quite arty. He's always struck me as having art in his veins and stuff like that. Daz, what, what did you make of the five colours advert first? Colourful, <laughs> <What's>... <laughs> for a start. <laughs> um, I think it, it definitely struck something, but it, it, the marketing concept, I believe, is designed to get people to, to say, what is it? So you're going to get a mixture of smokers and non-smokers looking at it. And I think it's very, very clever the way that they've marketed it at the same time because even though the people don't smoke are going to get the general concept of it. So from an education point of view, it means that they're hopefully going to be going out and educating the people and saying, have you seen this ad that I've seen on the TV? Interestingly, interestingly, someone of my acquaintance who will remain nameless um, saw the Five Colours ad and thought it was for a shop like Gap. Mm. I can well, Im I can well Im imagine, absolutely. Um, but I think it would be targeted for maybe a specific market, say for, for people who are going out or something like that, um, more than the general everyday vape. I think it's definitely designed for a target market. It, it, it just has that look about it. Well, I... I I don't know. I didn't get much of, of, of anything out of it other than people jumping about and pretty colours mm. coming off. And I actually know what it's for. I, I'm fully aware. It's for an e-shisha. It's for an electronic shisha stick is what it's for. Uh, because if you go at the site, you can see what it's all about. And I believe, I'm not sure, but I think they've also got nicotine con containing products. But I, there might be a little bit of hedge in the bets there a little bit. I'm not sure. 
Um, Matt, what what uh, what do you make of, of the whole uh, five colours thing? <laughs> well, I think it's hilarious, but for the wrong reasons. <laughs> you know, because, because because I know what it's about. I just think I just think it's a joke. Um, I mean, it it doesn't. Uh, let's be honest, it doesn't do a good job of uh, advertising e six, does it really? Um, and uh, okay, yeah, they're going for this uh, shisha craze, but it doesn't. If you, it doesn't say what it's about, it does look like a fashion advert for the fashion clothes or something like that. It's exactly what it looks like. Five colours, even the name, five colours, with the all these uh, bouncy, young, trendy uh, people jumping up and down with great big uh, grins on their faces. It it just simply doesn't advertise e-cigs. Uh, I don't know what they're trying to do. It does not uh, do that for them. And uh, a, a bit of a miss, I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity for them. It must have cost them a fair few, Bob. Well, it won't um, have come so cheap, that's for sure. But, I mean, there's, no. always, there's always the possibility that the bright young things who have been around the clubs and seen e and uh, the various other electronic shisha, shisha sticks, they'll have seen five different colours uh, because everybody's doing five different colours of them, at least five. And they may pick up on it and go and have a look. It's, I suppose, even if they just go to the Five Colours website and have a look, then they might be tempted. So to that yeah, degree, but... it, it might pick some up. Folks might think it's going to be five different colours of Wicked and go and have a look and then go, ooh, that's a good idea. So I suppose if there's, if there's a bit of... Um... I don't... No, I mean, if I saw an advert for the Gap or New Look, I wouldn't go and look at on their website straight away to find, uh, you know, uh, if I saw that advert and thought it was a fashion show, I, I wouldn't go and look at the website if I was a smoker or a, or a shisha uh, fan. But, you know, okay, maybe that's what they're trying to do. Just, uh, or perhaps it might be part of some long-term series. This might be the intro ad. Maybe there's a part two or part three coming along. Oh, you're uh, thinking like the, the, the Nescafe Gold thing where the, the will they, won't they? Yeah, it could just be building up. To, this could just be to get the curiosity. Next month, it might be, um, what are these five colours? And then they might kind of take it a step further. Um, let's wait and see. But, I mean, when, when I first saw it, I knew exactly what it was. I went to YouTube saying, oh, I heard that there was this five colours ad was was out. So I went to have a look, knowing exactly what it was, and I burst out laughing. And uh, I thought it was absolutely hilarious, but like I said, for the wrong reasons, um, because I think it was just a bit of a... Um, I don't know, just a bit of a waste of time, really. Yeah. I mean, fun, I'm sure, yeah, it's great fun um, to watch and uh, listen to, but uh, I, th I think they missed, uh, they missed something when they made that. Well, um, do, do, you, do you think that uh, SkySig have missed the boat as well, then, with their advert? Because I do know they took a lot of, a lot of time and effort to make sure that they didn't um, break any of the, the advertising guidelines. They were specifically aware of the, what is it, 40-year old ban on cigarette advertising and, and how it can be uh, you can't show anybody smoking a cigarette or anything or promote cigarette smoking and they've kind of adhered to that but that as well seemed a little bit arty to me how do you find it yeah it is um, and I think perhaps in five colors defense and also in sky's defense they didn't want to put an ad only for it to get stamped on um, you know, they didn't want to spend all this money only for it to get stamped on the, after it's broadcast the first time and pulled and wasted. So, you know, the guy, they, perhaps they didn't know exactly how far they could push the boundaries. Um, so they were playing it safe. Um, in terms of the Sky ad, it's an improvement on definitely an improvement, in my opinion, on, on the five colours one. But it, it, it looks like more like an advert for an MP3 player. They've all got earphones in. They're all carrying this little black box with earphones in. Yes. Um, with this beaty music in the background um and if you weren't into e cigs or something I, it wouldn't be until the very end at least at the end they they show you a picture of the product with the price and the link so you know oh it's a 14.99 sta e cig starter kit yeah um so at least they do that and uh I, i'm not sure i don't know if sky knew that e lights were doing one or if e lights knew that sky were doing one or maybe they thought they were the only one um, so the, the pressure to compete on the advert well, perhaps wasn't there. Um, I think the Sky one's a good first effort, um, but are we coming on to the E-Lite one now? Yeah, I, I think we should, yes. I think, I we think the E-Lite yeah. one's much better. Yes. I think that's much better. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a much, much better ad. It's entertaining to watch, even not 
modern smokers, people not in, in the slightest bit uh, part of the target market, can watch that, and it's quite a quite a funny little uh, clip, really. The guy pops out for a cig, comes back. It's got this Gangnam dancing baby, around, you know, and he's missed it because he's out for a cig. Everyone gets the storyline and the joke, and uh, you know, the the uh, it's got the the logo at the end and the tagline that advertises e-cigs. That is an e-cig ad. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, could they have done it a little bit better? For a first attempt at an e-cig TV ad, I think that's not bad at all. Um, and in fact, I read on the e-lights have said on their Facebook page, uh, um, uh, I saw a comment there, they've got an extended version, which uh, can't go on TV. It's going to be on the internet only. Um, so I can't wait to see that, but I guess they'll have a few more jokes in there, and perhaps even a scene of someone uh, puffing away on something. Well, so. you, you, you've brought me to the fourth video, and if, if, dear viewer, gentle viewer, if you are of a nervous disposition, or at all what we in the North East call cockley, i.e. that is to say that you might throw up easily, then I, I would exhort you to look away now. Because one of the things that struck me about all three of these ads is that nowhere at all do you see this happen. You don't see the satisfaction that we all get from using an electronic cigarette. And yet, there is another brand new advert going round where you do see somebody thoroughly enjoying not an electronic cigarette, but, well, as I said, if you're cockily, look away now. When you smoke, the chemicals you inhale cause mutations in your body. And mutations are how cancer starts. Every 15 cigarettes you smoke will cause a mutation. If you could see the damage, you'd stop. Yeah. Now somebody tell me because I've got no idea why is it all right to show somebody smoking in an advert for a quick kit and yet it's not all right to show somebody using an e-cig vaping in an advert for a vaping product when patently what you achieve and we know this what you achieve is getting away from cigarettes if that's what you want to do it makes no sense to me Matt you're right, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I mean, that, uh, the number of times I've heard people say that when smokers, I've heard smokers say that when they see one of these ads, it makes them want to fag. Um, it sounds like the opposite of what they intend, the, the adverts intended to do. Uh, I certainly remember when, when, uh, when I used to smoke cigarettes, I, these adverts didn't have any effect on me whatsoever. Um, and I just, uh, you know, I just... Uh, think that they, they, the, the whole idea that you can sm show someone smoking um, but you can't show someone uh, using an e-cig just you know it doesn't stand up to any any kind of logic uh, if e-lights were able to show a guy sat in a sofa at home puffing away on an e-light um, the sales of, would be phenomenal um, and it people uh, the sales of tobacco would uh, uh, would crumble, and that's what they want, isn't it? That's what these health professionals want. Yes, I, so, I, I, you know. see, I, I, I think the whole, the whole phrase "public health" is an oxymoron. Um, but as per usual, we've got to give the last word to chat. So, Daz, what have you got for us? Yeah, um, we do have some comments coming from chat. Phil Emerson says, Five Colours looks like an e shisha ad, which I think we established. Margot Van Basten, the best ad out there, has to be the last one for e-lights. Chat all agree about the baby. Uh, the Happy Vapor says, I think it's fair to say that we aren't the target demographic there. And Lazy Vapor, Gang and Baby ad ha uh, has at least created discussion. Well... Yes, exactly, and you can't you can't really argue with that. Um, we've reached that time. Um, we we have actually reached that time, and it has as as it always does. It's flown by one more time. Um, I need to say an awful lot of thanks to an awful lot of people. First off, to Matt 
from Gluggles in York. Thank you for coming in. Are you flooded down there? No, yes? No, no floods yet. Excellent it's stuff. It's a pleasure being on tonight, Dave. That's what we like. Thank you for coming on. Does your first time in Savas Hot Seat, how did it feel? <sighs> I can't believe it.